The 7900 XT is the most underrated graphics card AMD has ever launched. And for good reason. When the graphics card launched, it was way too expensive and the performance just wasn't there. But you know what they say, there are no bad products, only bad prices. And the consumer dictates the price. Now, this thing launched at $899 and nobody bought it. But AMD's been slashing those prices. So now, it's worth a second look. So the goal of today's video, we got three graphics cards here. We need to see how much FPS you can get for your dollar. The entire tech industry is down right now. Nobody's buying shit. Coincidentally, at the same time, it's never been a better time to build a new rig. For example, a 12700K is $230 now. Affiliate link down below. So the three cards we're going to be taking a look at here to compare against each other is the 3090 Ti, an old school EVGA one. Rip and a 7900 XT and a 4070 Ti. So the 4070 Ti here, this was the cheapest one I could find. It was a Ventus, got this for $800. The 7900 XT here, I, I believe this one's the Merc uh, Black Edition. I got this one for 750 with the game code. And then the 3090 Ti over here, we're gonna be using this one as our base comparison. And the reason why we're using this one is because the 3090 Ti has 84 SMs, right? And the 7900 XT has 84 CUs. So compute unit for compute unit, these two cards have the same computational number of cores. Obviously this one goes to three gigahertz and this one goes to like 2.2, but it's interesting to see how much faster AMD's card will go with an extra 40% clock speed. It should be 40% faster, right? Now the last thing we're gonna take a look at with these cards is the power draw. Now on this channel, we don't care about absolute power draw, we care about absolute performance. But now the idea here being the 3090 Ti, or I should say Ampere in general, this was by far the most power hungry generation in history of graphics cards, by far. This thing will pull 700 watts if you wanted to, right? It's ridiculous. Now, what we wanna see is, with this thing being as power hungry as it is, how far have current gen AMD and Nvidia cards come in power efficiency? And then obviously VRAM, I'm not too big on VRAM, 24, 20, 12 gigs, right? So for this card over here, the 4070 Ti, you're paying $50 more, no game code, and you get eight gigs less of VRAM, right? So that's a hard sell, but if it's much faster for some reason, then maybe it is worth it. Don't forget affiliate links for these two products down below. And this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. All content on this channel is supporter backed. No sponsorships, no samples, only journalistic integrity. So if you believe what we do here with unbiased reviews, head on over to the website framechasers.org, become a supporter, support what we do here so that we can continue to bring you unbiased content in the future. So with that out of the way, let's go run some benchmarks and see what's the best value for your dollar. All right, first up, we're gonna do some synthetic ones, 3D mark, uh, graphics score only, in Fire Strike, Time Spy, and Port Royal on all three of the graphics cards. I forgot to mention that the test bench for today is not my Intel system. It is the 7800X3D max overclock. The reason why we're using the AMD platform this time is because we want to use smart access memory with that 7900 XT to give it the best possible chance to shine. So you can see that the 7900 XTX blows the other two cards out of the water in Fire Strike and Time Spy. The 3090 Ti and 4070 Ti are basically neck and neck, except in Port Royal there, where the 3090 Ti takes the win because it has the most memory bandwidth and 84 ampere ray tracing cores. So with these numbers here in Fire Strike and Time Spy, the 7900 XT is about 25% faster than the other two graphics cards. So keep that in mind as we go forward here. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is up next. We're just going to plow through these resolutions here. First up, 1080p. 
7900 and 4070 Ti are basically neck and neck exactly the same, and they're both about 10% faster than the 3090 Ti in 1080p. And then 1440p, the 7900 XT pulls away just a little bit. It's about 6% faster than the 4070 Ti and 14% faster than the 3090 Ti, right? So we're already starting to see a discrepancy here where the 7900 XT is clocking 40% faster and it's only around 10% faster than last gen's NVIDIA card. And then 4K, this is the tightest showing between all three of them. Again, the 7900 XT is about 6% faster than the 3090 Ti. So something about RDNA 3 is quite broken here. The fact that it's that much faster of a card on paper, as you saw in 3D Mark, and the fact that it's tying a 3090 Ti in 4K, something, something's not right here. Remember, both cards have 84 CUs, and the 3090 Ti is only clocking at 2.2 gigahertz. All right, Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, basically the exact same story as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Both of the bottom cards are 6% faster than the 3090 Ti. And then 1440p here, we actually have the most interesting showing, where the 4070 Ti drops down 6% slower than the 7900 XT. Now, oddly enough, the 3090 Ti has the highest 1% lows here. So clearly this game specifically favors memory bandwidth over everything else. And that's why you're seeing the order that it's in. Now in 4K, definitely the most interesting results here with the 3090 Ti is actually the fastest card out of the three. So last gen's flagship is beating this gen's high end. And again, which also adds evidence to the fact that it's all memory bandwidth because the 3090 Ti has over one terabyte of memory bandwidth. Now, before we move on, though, even though the 3090 Ti has the most impressive showing here, let's take a second to look at the power draw of all three of these cards. So when you actually see the power draw numbers, it paints a very different picture, doesn't it? The 4070 Ti, while being 18% slower than a 3090 Ti, it is pulling almost half as much power in order to do it. That's kind of why it's my favorite card of this generation. Now, the 7900 XT, though, it's pulling 400 watts to achieve that FPS number. So RDNA 3 is almost as inefficient as Ampere was. So the 3090 Ti here is 10% faster than a 7900 XT, and it's 30% worse power draw. So not the best showing for AMD here so far. Okay, up next, we're going to do Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is your AMD-sponsored title. And then here, the 7900 XT is almost 18% faster than a 3090 Ti, right? So very stark contrast. Now, for all you Starfield people that are looking forward to that game, you might be looking into your future right now. And then in 1440p, it pulls ahead even more beating the 4070 Ti by 14%, and then the 3090 Ti by 20%. So now it's starting to look like if the title actually is AMD sponsored and AMD optimized, these cards can theoretically perform very well. And then in 4K, no surprises here, 4070 Ti falls behind the other two. And then the more bandwidth heavy graphics cards, pull away. About 14% victory here for the 7900 XT. So Metro Exodus is up next. We're using the high preset with ray tracing, no DLSS, no upscaling, right? So in 1080p here, we seem to be CPU bound a little bit. Because we're using the 7800X3D, the memory speed is only at 6300 megahertz. So AMD platforms are not the best for ray tracing benchmarks. You really want that 8000 megahertz on an Intel system to take advantage of that RT. So even in 1440p here, we are still CPU bound with ray tracing on on the high preset, which is crazy. You'd think that we would see a difference by now, but let's go check out the 4K results. And 4K, these results make way more sense. Now, the 3090 Ti pulls ahead of the other two cards. Obviously, it has the most ray tracing Ampere cores. 
So the interesting thing here is it looks like Ampere, even though it's 40% less clock speed than a 7900 XT, in this game specifically, it might be NVIDIA sponsored, but in this game, it's about it's about 30% faster than RDNA 3 in ray tracing with 40% less clock speed. It's pretty crazy how far ahead NVIDIA is with ray tracing. On the same token, the 4070 Ti is almost matching a 3090 Ti with 60 SMs. So there really is an improvement here with Ada Lovelace on those ray tracing cores. Okay, so up next, we're just going to quickly do Apex Legends. Now, we're not going to do a full benchmark run here. All we're going to do is we're looking for the AM dip. AMD graphics cards have always had an issue in Apex Legends when you're viewing a scene from really far away. So the spot that I found here is very, very, very GPU intensive. Now, it seems to be somewhat fixed. Not totally, though. The last time I tested Apex Legends with an AMD graphics card, it was horrendous, down to about 150 FPS. At least now, we're actually getting 300 FPS, but it seems like the AM dip is still there. Those 1% lows are still quite a bit lower than the two NVIDIA cards. So if you're playing this game on an AMD graphics card, it might just look a bit more blurry and less smooth to you if you're on a 240Hz monitor. So Apex Legends is a no-go if you are an AMD graphics card user. Okay, Warzone is up next here, and uh, the 1% lows are still janked up in this patch. So you can ignore those. We're going to look at the averages for now. Now, when looking at the average FPS, we know that Warzone scales with everything. So the 7900 XT is in the best position here with 84 CUs at 3 gigahertz. So this one is about 20% faster than a 3090 Ti. It's also about 6% faster on average than the 4070 Ti. Unfortunately, I can't test for the AM dip right now because they're all AM dipping, but when I tested this back with the 7900 XTX and the 6900 XT, there wasn't really a dip, so I'm going to assume that's probably okay to assume that this game isn't dipping once this patch is fixed i mean so i am hesitant to recommend the amd card because every time i do recommend the amd card they always break it in a future driver or a future patch of some sort but if you are in that 700 to 800 dollar graphics card range and you are only a warzone player then the 7900 xt might actually be a good option for you but it also just seems crazy to me that the 4070 Ti is keeping up with 24 less SMs than the 7900 XT still. Just NVIDIA, the Ada Lovelace architecture has some wizardry going on with that shit. Yeah, so I think honestly the 4070 Ti is probably my favorite card this generation. Obviously the 4090 is the fastest, but it's the 4090, right? This thing is like a technological marvel. This thing has 40% less CUs than the 7900 XT and also pulls 40% less power. So to me, that's actually worth the extra $50. Now, the strange thing is, this might have just been a really good sample. I was seeing upward of 3.1 gigahertz on this thing. And when it comes to the memory slider, I had it at plus 2000 all the way, right? No errors, no problems. So I think that's why this one specifically scaled so well in 4K as opposed to the higher memory bandwidth cards. That being said, though, the 7900 XT also hit 3.1 gigahertz consistently, just pulls too much damn power and doesn't have the NVIDIA features. So for $50 less, that's going to be a pass. But if it was like $100 less, that would be a different story, I think. Now, there's also a little bit of an elephant in the room here as well. The 6950 XT. We didn't have time to benchmark this card today to compare it, but you can get this for $600. I went back and checked my numbers of this thing against the 7900 XT. 7900 XT max OC is only about 10 to 15% more performance, but as it is right now, it's 25% more money. So it's not worth getting over a 6950 XT. I'll leave affiliate links to this down below as well. So the 4070 Ti, my favorite card, but not worth it from a price standpoint. And also the 7900 XT is actually a good, well-performing card, but still too expensive when this thing exists, right? 
Now, if this dropped to $700, then it would put it right in line with the pricing of the 6950 XT as well. And then now you might actually have an argument for picking this thing up. But at $750 or more, it's not worth it for FPS per dollar or power draw. So even after all these price cuts, not good enough, AMD. If you want to move units, we got to see bottom barrel pricing. Anyway, guys, we're going to call it there. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all the YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you think of the 7900 XT versus 4070 Ti versus whatever from last gen. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.